Fire safety. For a fire to start, three things as shown in this triangle are needed. They are fuel, oxygen, ignition sources. If any one of these is missing, a fire cannot start. So, taking steps to avoid the three coming together will reduce the chances of a fire happening. Fire detection and control equipment includes fire alarms, fire extinguishers, safety hose, fire blanket, fire buckets, etc. A few general measures that should be kept in mind to prevent large fires are Keep in mind that liquids with low flash points may ignite if they are near heat sources such as hot plates, steam lines or equipment that might produce a spark or heat. A small laboratory fire is considered to be one that is extinguishable within 1-2 to two minutes. The appropriate action to take is to cover the fire with an inverted beaker or wet paper towels. If this fails, use a fire extinguisher. Laboratories should have the appropriate class of extinguisher for the fire hazards in the laboratory. In general, a class BC or class ABC extinguisher is appropriate. We will discuss these types shortly. Fire extinguishers must be inspected annually and replaced as needed. Laboratory personnel should be trained on the various classes of fires and basic fire extinguisher use in annual laboratory safety and hazardous waste management training. All exits must be marked with fire exit signs which glow in the dark. Fire extinguishing methods Fires can be extinguished in one of four ways. By cooling, water is used to cool the burning material below the temperature at which it starts to burn. By smothering, carbon dioxide or foaming agents or dry chemical extinguishers are used to smother the burning material so that the air is excluded. By removing the fuel, this is usually very difficult to do. An example is turning off a fuel line. By disrupting the chemical chain reaction or interrupting the flame, dry chemicals or halon are used to do this. Types of extinguishers Extinguishers are available for use on one or more classes of fire depending on the extinguishing agent they contain. Example, water, chemicals. Fire extinguishers are rated as A, B, C or D or combinations of A, B, C and D. Now let's see the chart below. Fuel sources, class of fire, type of extinguisher. Fuel sources, ordinary combustibles, example, trash, wood, paper, cloth. The class of fire is A. Type of extinguisher, that is the extinguishing agents are water, chemical foam, dry chemical. Fuel source of flammable liquids, example, Oils, grease, tar, gasoline, paints, thinners. Its class of fire is B. The type of extinguisher, carbon dioxide, that is CO2, dry chemical, aqueous film forming foam, fuel source, electricity, example, live electrical equipment. Its class of fire is C. Type of extinguishers are CO2, dry chemical 2. Fuel source combustible metals, example, magnesium and titanium. The class of fire is D. The type of extinguisher, dry powder, suitable for the specific combustible metal involved. Selection. Using the wrong extinguisher to fight a fire can have serious results. For example, if a water-based extinguisher is used on a flammable liquid fire, class B fire, the fire may flare up, spread and cause personal injury to the user and others. Similarly, if a water-based extinguisher is used to fight a fire in or near electrical equipment, class C fire, the user could suffer an electric shock. Follow these steps in selecting extinguishers for your workplace. Conduct an assessment to identify your fire hazards and determine the type of extinguishers needed. The extinguishers you select must match the classes of fire most likely to occur. A good way of doing this is by checking the material safety data sheets of all chemicals used in your lab to identify materials that could catch fire.
determine the size of potential fires in each area and how fast they could spread. Extinguishers for Class A and Class B fires are rated for the size of fire they can handle. This rating appears on the label and is expressed as a number from 1 to 40 for Class A fire and 1 to 640 for Class B fires. The higher the number, the larger the fire the extinguisher can put out. However, the higher the rating, heavier the extinguisher will be. Extinguishers for Class C fires depend upon such factors as the size of the electrical equipment, how it is constructed, whether it is enclosed, and the nature of the other combustible materials in the area. Agents for Class D fires should be carefully selected based on information in the material safety data sheet and the manufacturer's recommendations. The amount of agent needed depends on the surface area of the metal and its shape and form. Class D fires are the least common type of fires that can occur in a laboratory. Location Locate extinguishers where they can be readily reached for use while a fire is still small. However, don't locate them where they could be a hazard to employees or where they could get damaged. Look out for missing or discharged or uninspected fire extinguishers. These should be replaced at the earliest by notifying the authorities. Identification Manufacturers place markings on extinguishers to indicate the class or classes of fire for which they are suitable. To make identification easier in an emergency, consider applying class ratings to wall panels near extinguishers. These markings should be easy to see from a distance of 4.6 meters, that is 15 feet. Now, the symbol A, which is ordinary combustibles, the description, extinguishers for class A fires are identified by a triangle containing the letter A. If colored, the triangle is green. To prevent fires, keep storage and working areas free of trash. Place oily rags in covered containers. Symbol for flammable liquids. Description Extinguishers for Class B fires are identified by a square containing the letter B. If colored, the square is red. To prevent fires, don't refuel gasoline-powered equipment in a confined space in the presence of an open flame or while the equipment is hot. Keep flammable liquids stored in a tightly closed container and away from spark-producing sources. Symbol for electrical equipment Description Extinguishers for Class C fires are identified by a circle containing the letter C. If coloured, the circle is blue. To prevent fires, use flammable liquids only in well-ventilated areas. Never install a fuse rated higher than specified for the circuit. Investigate any appliance or electrical equipment that smells strange. Unusual odors can be the first sign of a potential fire. Symbol for combustible metals. Description Extinguishers for Class D fires are identified by a star containing the letter D. If colored, the star is yellow. To prevent fires, utility lights should always have some type of wire guard over them. Knowledge of the properties of the metals and using good judgment and common sense will assist you in controlling or avoiding potential fires or reactions. Use of fire extinguishers and stages of emergency action plan. Fire extinguishers are designed to put out or control small fires. A small fire, if not checked immediately, will soon spread out of control. Memory aids A few mnemonics to remember when there is a fire in your area is RACE R -A -C -E. Rescue anyone in immediate danger of the fire. Alarm. Shout or activate the nearest fire alarm pull station and call the emergency number. The fire alarm will ring on the fire floor and throughout the building. Confine the fire by closing doors to the fire. Do not lock. Evacuate to an area of refuge and extinguish the fire if possible. When a fire is reported on your floor, everyone is required to evacuate the area either through a set of fire doors on your floor or via the stairs downward at least two floors to a safe area or to the outside. Never go up unless you are below grade or down to an area below grade. Do not use elevators.
If you fight a fire, remember the word pass, P-A-S-S, that is pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Pull the pin. Some extinguishers require releasing a locking latch, pressing a puncture lever or other motion. Aim low, pointing the extinguisher nozzle or its horn or hose at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle. This releases the extinguishing agent. Sweep from side to side at the base of the fire until it appears to be out. Watch the fire area in case fire breaks out again and repeat the use of extinguisher if necessary. Warning! Never fight a fire if the fire is spreading beyond the immediate area in which it started or if it is already a large fire. The fire could block your escape route. You are unsure of the proper operation of the extinguisher. You doubt that the extinguisher you are holding is designed for the type of fire at hand or is large enough to fight the fire. Handling a fire emergency Always be prepared for a fire emergency. Check the location of firearms and know how they work. Learn your building evacuation plan. Know where your two nearest exits are located. Learn how doors swing and where stairs lead. Make sure nothing blocks fire pulls, extinguishers and emergency exits. Learn the sound of your building fire alarm. Post emergency numbers including security and first aid near your telephone. Make sure you know what to do if the fire alarm sounds. Plan your escape. When you notice a fire, consider the following. Pull the nearest fire alarm while exiting the floor. If there is no fire alarm, dial the emergency number. Do not assume that anyone else has already called the fire department. Stay calm and be prepared to answer the operator's questions regarding the emergency. Evacuate In case you hear the fire alarm, leave at once following your building's evacuation plan. Do not delay yourself by gathering personal items. Your safety always comes first. Before you open any door, feel the door with the back of your hand. If the door is cold, slowly open it a little. If there is no smoke in hallways or stairwells, follow your building's evacuation plan. Get out quickly using designated fire exits. Close doors behind you. However, do not lock the door. The stairway will be your primary escape route. Never use elevators under any circumstances. If you are trapped in smoke or heat, before you open any door, feel the door with the back of your hand. If the door is warm to the touch, do not attempt to open the door. Stuff the cracks around doors with towels, rags, clothing or tape and cover vents to keep out the smoke. Stay low to the floor and if possible, cover your mouth and nose with a damp cloth or dust mask to help you breathe. If there is a phone in the room where you are trapped, call the fire department to tell them exactly where you are located. Do this even if you see fire apparatus on the street below. Wait at a window and signal for help. Do not panic or jump. Wait. If possible, open the window at the top or bottom, but do not break it. You may need to close the window if smoke rushes in. Be patient. Rescuing all the occupants of a building can take several hours. An effective way of fighting a fire emergency can be dividing the staff into different teams and each team being designated different responsibilities to avoid duplication or missing out on any of the important tasks. An example of the team protocol to be followed in case of big fires is shown here. 1. Team 1. Alert everyone of the fire. 2. Team 2. Telephone the emergency numbers. A. Fire Department 101 B. Ambulance 102 C. Police 100 3. Team 3. Check all rooms including bathrooms, dark room for any trapped people. Team 3 has the most difficult task and should include at least 4 people. 1 or 2 should operate the extinguishers and others should replenish new extinguishers and guide trapped people out. A cylinder will discharge in 10 seconds and will need to be replaced rapidly. 4. Team 4. 
should take the attendance at the assembly point and alert team 3 of missing people and give first aid till help arrives fire drill a fire drill is a method of practicing how a building would be evacuated in the event of a fire or other emergency the purpose is to make everyone aware of how to exit the building in the quickest easiest and safest way possible if a fire smoke or other emergency did occur and will help staff to familiarize with the sound of the fire alarm it should be unannounced a joint effort with the management involved check to ensure safety alarms and other equipment working appropriately feedback of the drill should be provided to all the participants discuss upcoming issues and or any changes required clothing fires buy clothing made of lower risk fabrics fabrics containing cotton cotton or polyester blends rayon and acrylic are relatively easy to ignite and burn rapidly choose 100% polyester nylon wool and silk as these are more difficult to ignite and tend to self extinguish knits and fabrics without a fuzzy or napped surface are less likely to ignite and burn rapidly than open knits or weaves or fabrics with brushed or piled surfaces consider purchasing garments that you can remove without having to pull them over your head clothes that are easy to remove can help prevent serious burns if clothing should catch fire it is important not to run as this would provide additional air to support the flames an important memory aid is stop drop and roll in case your clothing catches fire stop where you are drop to the floor and roll to smother the flames as soon as the flames are extinguished shower cool burned areas with copious amounts of water if someone else is on fire immediately immobilize the victim and force her to roll on the ground to extinguish the flames assist in smothering the flames using whatever is immediately available example blanket